Hey, what's good? I'm professional shooting coach Colin Castello with Shot Mechanics Basketball, and today we are busting another basketball myth, and that's the perfect set point. All right, there are a ton of myths in the basketball world, in the basketball skill development world, and one of the biggest ones is the set point. It's one of the things that I get questions on all the time. I get emails from parents all over the world. And so today what I wanted to do is help you maximize your set point and make sure it's perfect for you. But before we jump into it, if you really want to maximize your jump shot, click the top link in the description down below and get free instant access to my quick draw shooting workout. This is a workout I put together specifically for you to help maximize your shooting speed and your shooting consistency so you can get more shots off in game and knock them down when you get them. All right, so to begin, let's talk about what the set point actually is and why it's important to a jump shot. So the set point is basically just the point in a jump shot where the ball starts moving from up to forward, right? And so a set point is really important because it's kind of that transition point in your jump shot from where it's going, you know, from your start of your jump shot to the finish of your jump shot. Now, the thing about a set point is it's not necessarily what people always think it is. And a lot of people put maybe too much emphasis on the set point and they want it to look a certain way, right? So a lot of us think that a set point has to be up by the forehead right here. We see NBA players shoot like this. We see the best, you know, a lot of the like, you know, big name players in the NBA shoot like this. And so people automatically assume that everybody's set point's gonna be the exact same. But the problem is, a set point's gonna change depending on your size, depending on your age, depending on your strength, right? And everybody's gonna be a little bit different. So one of the biggest things I always hear is I'll have a, a parent, you know, be like, hey, can you work with my kid? And, you know, they'll be like, hey, I really think he needs to raise a set point and X, Y, Z, blah, blah, blah. But the problem is the kid might be a fifth grader. Maybe he's really weak. Maybe that's just not the mechanics that work for his body because his arms are shorter, whatever it is. So a set point doesn't be a specific thing. It's a specific thing to your body. So what we're seeing nowadays is a lot of players are having you know, a lot of success with different set points. You might see somebody like Kobe Bryant who had a really high set point, right? This is kind of the textbook one that a lot of people are trying to get. Or you might see somebody like Trey Young who has a really low set point, something down here kind of by his chin, by his nose. So what this tells us is you don't necessarily have to have a high set point to be successful with a shooter, right? Now the biggest argument that I always get is like, well, you need to have a high set point because you're never gonna be able to get your shot off if you don't. It's simply not true, right? That's kind of an old wives tale that just really is you know, a myth in the basketball space. A lot of the great shooters out there nowadays are lowering their set point because it can maximize their up force and maximize their flow. So the first thing we need to think about is a high set point is not always a better set point. That's the first kind of myth we need to bust. So what we want to think about, and what I always think about when it comes to a set point, is it needs to be something kind of fluid. Your set point's not going to be the same from when you're in fourth grade, from when you're a college player, right? It's going to have its development. You know, your set point might start down here by your chest when you're younger. Then as you get a little older, you might move it up here to kind of your collarbone as you're launching into it. Then you might move it up to your chin, then your nose, then your forehead. And then if you're big, strong, and powerful, then you might raise it up above your head, right? But what we want to think about is your set point's going to change through time. And so what you want to think about is take a look at yourself right now. How old are you? How strong are you? What's your game like? What's your body development like? And that's probably going to tell you where your set point needs to be right now in time, right? Some of you watching this might be 20 years old. Some of you watching this might be 13 years old. So you're not all going to have the exact same set point. It's up to you to figure out what level is going to work best and how that's going to help translate into your jump shot and really maximize your shooting. All right, so the next myth that we have to bust when it comes to the set point is that a low set point makes you vulnerable to get stuffed, blocked, and you won't be able to get your shot off, right? This is probably the number one thing I hear over and over and over again from parents, from coaches, from players, that they're like, hey, if you have a low set point, you're not going to be able to get shots off. And that's just simply not true. The key to getting shots off isn't your set point height, it's your footwork and your preparation, right? If you're ready to shoot the ball and you've got quick feet and you've got quick footwork, you can get shots off in any scenario, even if you're shooting it down here by your chest, right? If we look at some really, really great shooter, somebody like Trey Young, right? He's able to knock down shots from pretty much all over the place and he's got a relatively low set point and he doesn't even jump very high. Right? But because his shot preparation is next level, he can get it off against the best athletes in the world. Somebody like Steph Curry, right, who's considered one of the best shooters of all time, if not the best shooter of all time, his set point's right about here, kind of by his eyebrow, which for a lot of coaches is a bit of a low set point. Right? It doesn't really matter. It's all about the footwork and the shot preparation. If we look at some of the elite level shooters on the women's game, a lot of them even have set points down below their chin and they can still get their shot off against elite competition. So it's not about the level of the set point. 
It's about the footwork, preparation, and being ready to shoot when you catch the ball and being ready to knock down that shot when it comes to you. All right, and don't forget, if you want to take your shooting to the next level, all you got to do is click the top link in the description down below. Get free instant access to my quick draw shooting workout that I specifically put together to help you maximize your shooting speed and shooting consistency. So you're not going to want to miss it. And if you're new to shot mechanics, smash that subscribe button, then head to the comment section down below and let us know what kind of video you want to see next. We're a channel run for the people by the people. So all you got to do is leave it down below and hopefully we'll be able to get to it. And again, I'm Coach Colin Castell with Shot Mechanics Basketball. And until next time, splash on.